Oh my, did he cripple? Boom! Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sanders channel, my name is Shanks and today we are on the map West Mnet to cast a 1v1 replay for BFME1 on the page 2.22 between the green gunner player Farad versus the red Isengard player Zemix, okay? Good against evil, you know me, I like this, El Clasico, let's do it. So Isengard starting with a furnace and a Uruk pit, capturing this one and going straight forward. The plan is to catch the enemy soldiers before they can make it to your settlement. That's the goal. And Gondor in the meantime, starting with a blacksmith only, using the post iron gate here to actually get to this area faster and demolishing it right after. That's a pretty solid strategy. Otherwise, you're gonna walk all the way around and you're gonna lose a lot of time. So he's gonna send his soldiers from the top side. That's good for Gondor. But Isengard units are luckily very fast. Because this is no rubble of mind, this orcs. These are Urukai. Okay, Gondor actually trying to creep, but Isengard will definitely be able to interrupt this. And with the war chant, he will force his opponent to use land. Unfortunately for Gondor, he actually picked the heal for creeping action. And there comes the war chant on two Uruks. Like, you could not have any better start than this one is Isengard. Look, he will steal the creep for himself his settlements will remain untouched he will even kill all the soldiers before they can do anything and in addition to that he will get lots of experience for free one of the uruks might be even very close to level two they won't get level two but what you can do after creeping this one you can use the uruk which got the last hit to use fist the bloodthirsty on the allied uruk for example this uruk can now use this one on this uruk to get level two each level will make your unit significantly stronger Farad, good micro with the Hobbit, Peregrine took, you know, last hitting those Lumber Mill workers, each of them cost 25, so it's pretty painful. In the meantime, very early stable, because he has three outside settlements, but he's about to lose two of them. Uruks are about to destroy this one, and this Uruk making it to this location, that's pretty great, but the early stable rush kind of benefits the gunner player, and he will be able to defend at least this settlement and get also experience. In the meantime, Isengard base is looking awesome, okay? So he has four furnaces, Uruk pit and a work pit. He will be able to use the work riders very soon to kind of chase down the enemy uh, Gondor Knights with the help of the Palantir, which he also will be unlocking very, very soon. Level two Uruks are disengaging. And also, this farm is under attack. So basically, he's forcing Gondor to play way more defensively than he would like to. During all this time, the Isengard settlements, beside the one at the top side, are still remaining untouched. And also, Hobbit will go down. Peregrine took. You fool of a took. In the meantime, base is looking amazing. Uruk pit level 2. He will be able to recruit some pikemen now to counter the enemy Gondor Knights. And the War Riders are gonna be able to creep also. That's pretty decent. Okay, Gondor's first creep. Because this one was a big fail. And that's the reason why Gondor has only around one power point collected. But imagine if you get the last hit here, you know? Like, those small things can be so crazy game-changing. Because if the soldier gets level 2, if Gondor gets the money, like, these are two big, impactful things that would legit change the outcome of the early game. Who's gonna get the last hit? Isengard. But the money? Okay, they split like brothers. In the meantime, Gondor was able to creep this walk layer with the Gondor Knight number 2, level 2. The base is looking good. He will have in total three, six blacksmiths. That's the magical number to get enough resources, but also the full, you know, blacksmith steel bonus for 40% cheaper upgrades, which is crucial for Gondor. If you play Gondor, you gotta build blacksmiths as your primary resource building. So it's like the key. You don't want to build farms. Even though farms make your Knights of Gondor cheaper, but the benefit you get from the blacksmiths is just way more valuable. Okay, Isengard was able to interfere this creep. He has uh, the <laughs> combos of doom. What we like to call them, the soldier pikeman combo or the Urukai, the Ur Isengard pikeman combo. Very tanky, super solid, very strong. Isengard has the outpost too. And he has two outposts actually. He's gonna get so much money. Holy. Building a couple of towers, getting full bees over here. And eventually should be saving up for them uh, for the loot. But Gondor can also creep the straw layers in the middle. So the plan is simple. You use one of your knights of Gondor to lure the troll away from the lair and the second knight is gonna just commit to the lair remember gondor has a big advantage over all the other factions because gondor citadel is the only one structure in citadel structure in the game that can actually shoot 
So if you lure the troll to your castle, the citadel will actually slowly but surely take it down, which means even greater amount of power points. Holy man, this game is looking so good for Isengard. He has to now go for the barracks to counter the enemy Uru Pikeman combo. <clears throat> he needs to make his own combos now. Two power points in the bank. Oh, be careful. We improved the barracks. That's what you also can do, right? You can go behind the structure. That this way, the units inside the citadel can actually not shoot you. But if they have the armor and crossbowmen have no fire or upgrade, so they will take a long time to kill the knights. Oh, uh oh, be careful. Um, unlike the um, war, um, unlike the normal pikemen in the porcupine formation, you can actually trample this pikemen. They will still hurt you when you trample them, but it won't be a one shot. They actually dealt a great amount of damage, but you don't want to fight them in melee. You want to keep trampling. That's the way you want to deal with them. But in a dream world, you want to actually make heroes. Like Boromir, for example, can actually chase them. He's faster than those combos. But also the pikemen in the combo are very good against heroes. So with Warchan, two of these combos can definitely be enough to take down the Boromir, the captain of Gondor. So Isengard has the full map control, right? He has four out of four outpost control. He has even a secondary Uruk pit around this area making some crossbow men to put them inside but there comes the combo of two tower guard soldier combination the infantry combo very solid no fire arrow on this one will not deal any significant damage to the tower guards and soldier combination and unlike the gunner knights these units can actually take down the citadel in a few seconds it's gonna use war chant on them it's gonna buff their damage a little bit but i don't think that's gonna change the outcome of the game outcome of the situation i mean and gondor is struggling for now but it will be changed once these combos start rolling. He's, he keeps making more of them, 15 command points and 10 command points, so each of them will cast, cost 25. It means you can have 10 combos of this soldier tower guard combination. The Knights of Gondor, zero protection, this outpost is not a big threat. This combo will be finishing this one, while the Knights of Gondor finishing this one. And Gondor kind of finding his way back into this game, okay? But the game is all about to start. There is a random farm over here. We have also lots of slaughterhouses, and the one creep remaining is a troll lamb in the middle on the left. Armory, he has purchased all the upgrades, should be demolishing it immediately. It's just a waste of spot, doesn't give you any benefit. It's a defensive structure, it can shoot at nearby enemy units, but you don't need it. Okay, big commitment. Condor actually kind of finding like a great momentum. and with this momentum he is able to destroy three outposts in the last 60 seconds that's a big change and also the units are dying he has the gray company and now reclaiming map control isengard has also upgrades he has lourdes level three level three means he has the carnage carnage is a great counter to everything carnage also adds besides the increased damage to lourdes like also like a splash damage so he's able to hit multiple targets simultaneously which is pretty decent. Doesn't have Warchant yet because he used Warchant before. Beautiful trampoline coming. You can see the chunk. And the Grey Company. The Grey Company is very powerful summon at the early stages of the game. But at this point, when Isengard has armory and heavy armor, forge blades, and so on, they will lose the impact. But the Knights of Gondor demolish everything. This push is going to be crazy strong. Isengard sitting only on one outpost, which also was about to be destroyed. Lords running down those tower guards, getting more experience without using the carnage, getting closer to level 4, and Isengard going for the Tainted Land, okay? Which is okay, I mean, to be honest with you, at this point of the game, Gondor has no Boromir and no Foramir, right? With this information, you know the enemy has no leadership, you need to negate with your Freezing Rain. It's a different story if he actually goes for Boromir, Faramir, and gets them to level 5 and level 4 and 5, but it's not the case in this situation. You see the splash, he killed two units with one strike. Boom, Lords! <laughs> Lords! The Lords Wombo combo, baby. But now he has no more carnage. So you gotta be careful. You don't wanna lose. There is no backup, but there is a magical button, which is called the S button. He will be pressing S move, S move, S move. 
now we will be observing lords the only remaining urukai the knights of Gondor are chunking the level six is hitting like absolute truck and lords won't make it home to his master saruman so money from isengard is not looking that great he will of course have to invest 900 to revive his lords very important he's level four that means it will take you two minutes to get him back in the business so the higher level your hero is the more punishment in cost and also recruit or revive time that is going to be in two minutes in our rts game can feel like an hour trust me that one six power points now i would go for kill the fires yes because it's gonna be it's gonna cost less power points so freezing ring costs you seven this costs you only six which means you will get eventually faster to uh, the Balrog summon and also there is no need of freezing rain because there is zero leadership you need to negate Gondor of course being quite wealthy going for the marketplace get all these upgrades demolish it right after you need you don't need to keep it because look at this marketplace can be demolished after purchasing the upgrades you, you will still keep the upgrades even if the structure is demolished remember bfme one is a settlement based game so you have only a couple of them available Gondor, for example, is only nine available spots in the castle you can build. That means each spot is so valuable that you need to be extremely smart about your choice what to build. You can't expand mindlessly because it's limited on a map and in your castle. Isengard making now the pikeman crossbowman combo. They are not very strong against anything but horses. But the revenge damage from the pikeman is going to be kind of crazy. You can't trample into this anymore. Eagles are unavoidable. Remember, Warchan is on cooldown. But maybe it would be perfect time to use Eagles right here. I would be using Eagles knowing that Warchan is on cooldown. And without Warchan and Lord's leadership, this combos can't burst the Eagles fast enough. And you can actually, like, the way you want to use power points, like everything but AOD, is to gain power points out of that. So you summon stuff to either gain momentum out of it or you want to use eagles for example and gain like two power points from the eagle summon that's like the perfect situation he's gonna summon the eagles you want to manually aim the crossbowman i actually take it back because lord's got level five okay you see the difference in damage output with 60 percent more damage all of a sudden you are hitting like a truck you know <laughs> in the meantime level eight gonna knight pretty much one shotting one tabbing the furnace and isengard getting slowly back into the game these lumber mills are going to be so val valuable look you get 30 out of that you know that's crazy <laughs> like that's crazy like with six workers on like three mills you don't need anything else like this three lumber mills would be completely enough with the field of fires which increases your resource income by 75 percent and that's permanent by the way permanent unlike industry be careful you could just finish this he has also the marketplace upgrade you can see it the grand harvest going now for the iron ore and also has the siege materials siege materials is pretty underrated you always get 50 percent of the money back look when the gonna player will lose this structure he will always get 50 percent of the initial investment back and that's pretty valuable because sometimes you forgot you forget to demolish yourself and this is like a tiny investment of 500 siege materials is not very expensive Furnaces level 2, this one is level 3, level 3, level 3, which means you get 25 from each of them. Lead Kim has been arriving now. B bad, bad commitment, there is a statue and a tower that can deal constant damage, you can't win this. And they are fighting around the well, which means recovery 24-7. Alvin Wood has, has, has been placed by Gondor. Actually, Isengard didn't cover it until now. Nice. Now, that's why you go for land against Gondor against mordor it's pointless in my opinion because your your reign is going to be very important later on and your land will hurt you more than it will help you but against um rohan and gondor going for land after the industry or before the industry is very important you want to be ready with the with the cover because if you fight on enemy land it's basically fighting under the freezing rain effect lord be careful he's getting chunked a little bit but Gondonites, they will not take too much damage from these fire arrows. March to Minas Tirith. Leave none alive. Look at them, boys. The White Wizard Saruman.
Okay, Gondor is struggling. I think at this point of the game you need trebuchet. Yeah, you need it. Very important, Gondor trebuchet. Qu quite expensive too, 720. Because he has even 6 of them. If he doesn't have 6 of them, they will cost 1200, you know. That's very expensive. 6 power points for Isengard. He's 14 away from getting to the summon of Balrog. And Farad, the Gunner player, needs around 8 power points and around about a quarter. The farm, you see the plus 100, that's from the siege materials you get. I like the, the way this space looks actually, you know. This magma on the ground makes those evil buildings seem even more evil. It's like a cosmetic change. And he's gonna invest 2 power points into Ganav the White. So he has to have Ganav somewhere. That is, the two wizards have been arriving. Now, call me crazy, but I think in, in th at this situation, this wizard is actually gonna have more impact in an all-out fight because he is surrounded by an army that can always win the fights. So long story short, he has a fireball, which is, in my opinion, in most situations, better than Easter Light, and you can use it from a safe distance. And this one can be game-changing. It's legit as impactful as the War of Power. And his leadership is pretty decent too. 40% armor. Lords gives you 60% damage. And with Forchant, you have 110% damage leadership and 90% armor leadership. Like, this is crazy, you know? And Gondor is only gun of leadership, which is 50% armor and 100% combat experience. So it's not the greatest thing in the world. And he's going for the captains of Gondor, but a little bit too late. And also the archer range building up like it pretty much late game. So he will, like, let's calculate. He will need in total 75 seconds, which means a minute and 15 seconds to get three archers on the field. That will be enough to get the archer range level two. Then you need another 30 seconds for the fire upgrade. And then for each ranger, you need 25 seconds. So you need like minutes, which Isengard might not give you because he will purchase the outpost here, capture it, and then go for the siege. Um, but I think the problem with him is that his command points kept. He has too many units around this area. Look, he has in total one, two, three, four combos, Saruman Lourdes, even though heroes don't cost command points, but he has pikemen here. He has uh, units around here. Big push is incoming, Ganav is chilling, his Visa Plus is on cooldown, he's almost level 6, 8 power points collected, Pikeman around, there comes the big push, and losing this level 3 furnace are actually quite, it's a quite painful experience for Isengard, you can't replace them, it will take you around 10 minutes to get a level 1 furnace back to level 3, that's why destroying a resource buildings that are level 2 or level 3 is so valuable in this in this game, there comes Saruman, Saruman is going to be using Fireball on this, Power Guard, Soldier Combination, another Uruk, another Furnace level 3 has been destroyed. Where is Lords when we need them? But Isengard has to come. There is Lords, he's on the hunt for the Wizard, but Ganav sees it coming and he will be able to disengage. And of course, this combo can't match with the speed of Lords or Saruman. Saruman could keep chasing and use the Blast, but I think it's not worth the risk because there is still a Ganav who has the Easter Light and Lightning Sword available. But that's a good. Uh, distracting oh the eagles are coming smart move with the carnage for more tankiness but now that Lourdes is gone it means Gandalf can do whatever he wants beautiful trampling coming Saruman is wanted will Gandalf commit to him I hope not because there is still too much damage he's oh he's committing does he have heal the answer is no use. Oh my, what a big mistake. He got fooled by the 1 HP of Saruman. But Saruman, even though the circumstances were not looking in his favor, will be the wizard that will survive this battle. Saruman of many colors, ladies and gentlemen. That's a big ouchie. Because look at the power points now from Zemix. Killing Gandalf, losing Lords. If you don't know, losing units will and make evil factions also gain power points so losing Lourdes and Saruman you know actually kind of helps you <laughs> even though it sounds crazy 15 almost 16 power points for Isengard he needs only four more power points for his Balrog summon and if you have the outpost control with evil and you get Balrog it can be the game winning move okay and Gondor needs still six and a half power points for his own AOD he, he got kind of into this Rohan allies, which means minus three power points. Boromir level three, beautiful it, but doesn't hurt. Boromir needs to be level four. There comes the Tainted Land to cover the Elven Wood. There is another Elven Wood from Gondor, but it's a good land here from Isengard. But he has no army to fight. He's actually disengaging. Remember, Ganav is dead. 
and it will take you two minutes to get him back in the business. Lourdes is already back in the business. Saruman actually kind of died. I don't know how, I don't know who killed Saruman, but he died. And he was level six. It means two minutes and 30 seconds to revive the old man. Good map control for Isengard. Level 10 horses. Gotta be careful. There's a level five Uruk Pikeman horde. Crazy. Oh, what, what do I hear here? He used... Phew, doesn't hurt, doesn't kill. These are siege materials. Um, okay, he summoned the Balrog to actually destroy the trebuchet and to kill the army, to kill the combos. I think also Farami kind of died, right? Farami kind of died too. Um, now what I would be doing with this Balrog is I would pre fire here. pre fire here to destroy the gate. So you want to use Ignite, he's already ignited. Now you pre fire here. And that will destroy the gate. Just breath fire. Yeah, he's gonna breath fire now. It means the gate is broken. We are not talking about a gate rush, and there is no more gate to be rushed. And now this guy can jump inside the castle. Maybe eventually destroy the citadel. There is a lord. That means Ganoff can't approach this. Ganoff is around this location. Seven power points, almost eight. Balrog couldn't finish this off. Gondor is building a couple of trebuchet expansion which is pretty decent trebuchet expansion against low mobility units are actually mu much more significant than towers are towers against uh, war chant will need ages to kill this lords level seven again Gandalf is trying to make it to this location he doesn't buy fire stone on them and this unit will make it to the wall to destroy this trebuchet but gondor with its defense gaining power points like crazy he needs only one power point for the eod but remember there is a lord and his presence all alone will... Oh my, did he cripple? Did he cripple Gandalf? I, I can't tell. But no more pikeman combo. Lord's using Carnage. He didn't cripple Gandalf, by the way. But he killed a whole battalion of horses. Gandalf should blast. And Gandalf should get the last on this dude. Kill, kill Lord's. Nice. Level seven and a half, getting more and more experience. There is still some army in the base of Gondor, but I think the castle is safe at least for now. And he got power points. EOD can still stall this game out, okay? EOD, but Gondor is still, I mean, he can still get back into the game. He has an outpost with three farms over here. He has a level three farm here. And he has an outpost here too with no settlements. But I think with the help of Ganov, the EOD, the Eagles, and the Rohirrim, and the Grey Company, he can find his way back into this game. Unless Ganoff dies randomly to these two pleb units. Three pleb, pleb units. The pikeman almost killed him. Blast him. The trebuchet is going to be destroyed. Boromir will be sent now. He's still level 3. He didn't get... He barely get any experience. Lourdes has to be revived. Saruman is already back in the business. We get now siege, siege weapons. The ballista. Um, and also the Uruk pit was destroyed before. Now it's all about it. Level 3. Warg pit. Only level 1. One more Warg that is needed to get it to level 2 which also will add magma around the structure and two combos one of them being level five and saruman the 40 person armor leadership are moving this tower will definitely fall you can see oh never mind there is a eud summon and you might be a powerful wizard but eud doesn't care and gondor is still struggling to kill this he's gonna summon the fourth eoling guys the rohirrim summon will be unlocked um, there is a great company too to kill this remaining pikeman and with the help of the great company plus the Rohirrim summon Gondor Gondor's late game is kind of nutty you know you have like this crazy summons we are talking about four summons you know and you can do this every five to five to eight to twelve minutes so EOD of course has like nine minutes I mean nine minutes is like the maximum but five minutes thirty four minutes thirty six minutes thirty so you can summon them like that's why it's so important when you play against Gondor, you need to play around the cooldowns of its summons, you know? Boromir was finally able to kill this remaining army. Look at the minimap, boys. Gondor is about to get the last remaining outpost from Isengard. This game is not over yet. Because Balrog has been already kind of charging again. So now, we have two combos. But I think two combos is not enough, you know? You need like three combos. The gate is still broken from Gondor. That means Isengard could legit walk in. Like, what I like to do in some situations is I like to hide my walk riders. I'm gonna make four of them. Four is like the magical number. They also only cost com four, 30 command points. You can make four of them. And then, what you do is you give them upgrades. You use whole Warchan, you send them in. One of them goes for the Citadel. And then the other three, you go for each building one by one. 
and finish off the castle. He's gonna summon... Did he get crippled? No, he didn't get crippled. Where is Lords at? Lords died again, I think, to the Eagles. And Gandalf is gonna be just perfectly fine. He is on cooldown. That was really close, actually. Eagles are gone, though. Like, all the summons are gone now, including EOD. During all this time, Isengard was able to finish one of the outposts from Gondor and still fighting. Like, back and forth game, you know me, that's my favorite style of BFME gaming. Not one sided game at all. Gandalf is so low, man. One little laugh tap from the Swalker Iris, and it's gonna be over. Easter Delight, two of them. Level 8 can have two more levels needed for the War of Power, for the ultimate destruction, okay? For the Haki. Trebuchet is ready. The Saruman is chilling, still needs some levels for the Will of Saruman. Cloud Break is available now for the stun. And Isengard has also Devastation. You know, he has also all the power points from his spellbook. Beside, I think, what is he missing? I'm not sure. I think he has all. Bad Trample. But these units are so tanky. This level 8 units, that's crazy. Boromir guarding this trebuchet with his life. Paramir has not even been revived because he has not been able to show his quality in this game. And Gandalf is the true MVP, you know, riding from north to west, from south to east, and carrying the folks of Gondor, just like in the films, against the forces of Isengard. Balrog is almost available. EOD has been used like 2 minutes, 3 minutes later, so he will need still some time for the EOD to be recovered. And Lord is back, Saruman is back, and we get to see more combos. But Isengard's economy, because of the lack of map control advantage he has, is kind of struggling. Because Isengard combos really costly units, so you need 600 for this tool, and then you need to give them banner, you need to give them heavy armor, fire arrows, you know, and even forge bleeds on some of the pikemen. It's like lots of investment. So a combo will cost you around about 2,500 resources, with all of that. But fortunately, evil factions have crazy power points to boost their resource income. So in an even game, e evil will have always like a huge resource, resource advantage. That's like a good of a design. I like this unique because goods kind of rely on help and allies on reinforcements. Evil don't rely on that. Evil are already powerful. They don't need allies, you know? Three combos, four combos. That's a big army. Does he have the gate repaired? Nope. But even if he would... That comes to Balrog for the second time. Keep in mind, there are some trebuchet, three of them, plus four of them, and three of them around the base. I mean, it's Balrog, you know, it doesn't care about that one. Um, remember, Fireball can one-shot one of them. Beautiful breath fire. He's gonna whip, whip one-shots when it's ignited. Ignite will give you 200% increased damage. Trebuchet, kind of not very uh, weak against fire arrows, but it's a level 5 unit, and he will be able to destroy it. Now, the focus comes only exclusively on the buildings, but in the meantime, Gondor is going for a counter -tank. With three Knights of Gondor and Rohirrim summon, he will go inside the jeans. We need to see multiple pikemen. When you, when you hear the sound of Rohirrim, you want to keep spamming Uruk pikemen. It costs, six, it costs 300 resources, but only 16 seconds recruit time. But because he was not prepared, they won't make it out of the Uruk pit. And with this army, including Gandalf, he can definitely take down the entire fortress, entire castle. There is no backman. Uh, there is no backup. In the meantime, Gondor Castle has been destroyed. Faramir has been crippled and killed 56 for the head of Faramir. And now there is the fortress castle swap. The bees from Isengard. Quite durable though. With level 3 furnaces, shooting like crazy, multiple sentry towers. Like quite durable castle but not durable enough the level um, three knights with the shields of gondor and heavy armor are very tanky against arrow damage it is gandalf but his leadership because ne was negated because of the freezing rain isengard will invest his money to build up the whole castle going now for double uruk pit knowing that all matters now is to keep producing more and more units the great company the ranger summon i mean here in the in the outpost gondor is alive because he has still three outposts does he have the money the answer is yes he has the money to capture this castle for himself it's gonna be one of those games you know kind of typical castle swapping they are swapping the positions and the game kind of gets like a soft reset but at this point of the game i think gondor has a huge advantage because of the eod eod is about to be available in less than a minute which means you summon eod this army is quite solid strong 
but UD doesn't care about your strength, you know, he will one-shot all your heroes, Ballista will be one-shotted, Army will be one-shotted, one and then you, with your Knights of Condor, can easily walk into the Castle of Isengard, which is a brand new base, which means way less durable, all structures only level 1, that means destroying it will take you a quarter amount of time like it was compared to the castle you just destroyed. Fireball, one tower guard will remain alive. Outpost still protected. This outpost has been destroyed. Gondor lost our outpost, but destroyed our outpost. So they are going one by one. The castle, of course, fresh castle. Gondor is rich with the marketplace. You can see the animation on the blacksmiths. So, you know, marketplace is a great investment into the late game. Like the longer the game goes on, the more beneficial the upgrades from the marketplace made the Iron Ore or the Grand Harvest are gonna be. Oh, beautiful Easter Delight. Ganalf the White, level 9. He's looking serious on this profile picture for the Tinder. That's why no girls are texting him. And he has the summon of the Rohirrim summon very, very soon. The Great and the Eagle summon is available. EOD is available. And Cloudbreak is available. We have one, two, three, four knights. Oh my god. And Boromir, all about to hit level 4 too. If Boromir hits level 4, it means even a greater amount of damage leadership for his Knights of Condor. He will destroy everything they touch in a second. I think Isengard, knowing, I mean, Zemix is a great player, he knows, okay, my opponent will have actually EOD again. Uh, fortunately for Zemix, his opponent using EOD to kill like a very small army, which you could kill without the need of the EOD. The plan is here to just destroy, kill the castle as soon as possible and he's gonna summon the rohirrim to attack the castle over here right i mean the outpost which is by the way at this point as we're talking the only st the only thing that can that keeps isengard alive this castle has been fully destroyed uh, isengard going now for a potential git rush i see but he's waiting for the git to be finished this ballista has to capture this area asap but condor is so wealthy in Zorich, he could simply, he could give up this area. I mean, he invested too much money into this trebuchet. He had enough money to just buy this castle for himself. It was a bad AOD summon though. AOD summon was quite bad. There comes the combination of Cloudbreak and also... Boom! Chakalaka! Where is Lord's at? I don't know where Lord's actually is. Can't tell. But he's about to lose the last remaining outpost. Yeah, Saruman has been killed. No, he's about to be killed. Heal is going to be used. He's going to steal them. But Zemix will be defeated. And Gondor, the White City, shall prevail. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, make sure to leave a like to this video. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you all in the next video. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always... Stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.